All right. My name is Jesse. I am from PictureBandit.com, and this is Pepakura Designer 2. I believe uh, Pepakura stands for Papercraft. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. Anyway, if you do anything dealing with 3D, you should know about this program. I mean, seriously, this is this is awesome. I first came across it um, on my last project, looking to print uh, something in 3D, and this came up. And then I checked into it, and it turned out to be an awesome, awesome program. All right, what this program does is when you import your 3D model, it will flatten it out for you in a manner so you can print it on regular sheets of paper, cut it out, glue it together, and produce a physical replica of your model. Now, to me, this is just awesome. We're talking about prototypes, toys, rocket housings, uh, shells for robots, costumes, and as you'll see in a little bit, I use this program to create a Halloween costume for my son, and this thing looks real. Um, the first thing you want to know is to use low poly models. You can use high definition models, but it'll take a lot of cutting and intricate cutting and bending, and it's just going to be so small. You know, more the more organic your model looks, the harder it's going to be. So I suggest something with low low uh, polygons. Um, some file types that it accepts are uh, OBJ or object files, DXF files, uh, 3DS, and a couple others. You can just kind of go through in, in the open menu and just look, see what kind of files you can import in there. Um, first, we're going to go ahead, and as you can see, I already have a, a head open here. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, a 3DS file. It's a, a low poly file. First thing you might notice is... <laughs> If you got over, I'm not sure how many faces, I believe it's a thousand, it'll say too many faces. It may take a very long time to assemble. Just hit OK. Um, in this case, I have my uh, flip the faces. I'm not going to flip them. I already know what I'm. It's already pointing out to the front, so I'm not going to change that. It's already pointing down, not going to change that. Not inverting. And yes, join edges. When you first start, the uh, color is already on. So this is showing you all the edges. Some of the mouse controls are, if you right click anywhere over here on your object side, you can rotate your object around. If uh, you middle click, you can move it around. And if you middle scroll, you can zoom your object. The right side is actually your print preview screen. Um, there's nothing over here because we haven't unfolded our object yet. And uh, this is the size of a regular sheet of paper with your um, um, borders. Um, first thing we'll do is once you import your object, uh, go ahead and hit unfold. It might take a couple seconds. And then if you look over here on the right side of the screen, use your mouse to scroll in. It has all your folds, and this one's actually numbered. And the way this works is you cut this thing out, and you bend on all these lines. And based on your configuration, it may be a valley bend or a regular bend. And these lines are um, regular bends. So it's a hill bend or a valley bend. And then you take and cut it out. My numbers are kind of big, but um, you match these numbers up. So I'll say this flap 389, I'd come over here after I cut it out and glue this 389 right here to this 389 with the flap behind it and the fold on the crease. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, if you, oops, wrong way. If you look down here on the bottom right here, uh, underneath your print preview, you'll see it says assembled size. And the height is 7.1 uh, 7 centimeters. Not very big. But what it did, it flattened everything out to one piece of paper. So wh what you're going to want to do is, is uh, once you unfold your uh, object onto the piece of paper, you can actually turn off um, color on and off. So if you're creating something that you don't need the, um, the color printed onto it, you can turn it off, print it, glue it together, and then paint it later. Um, first thing you want to do is, uh, after it's been unfolded, is to resize 
you come to a 2D pattern window and then scale up or down by typing in So if I change this to, uh, I guess 26 would it be the normal size of a head, 26 uh, centimeters. It spreads it out over a bunch of pages. Now you can click and drag these around. If you come up here to the top, you can rotate them, you can divide them. So if it's on multiple pages, what we're going to want to do here is I just divide a face, select and move. Now I can separate these and try to get this one on one piece of paper. Um, if I wanted to rotate it for whatever reason, if it didn't fit, I could just click one of these circles, grab and pull another one, and it'll snap. Now I can fit it on one piece of paper. I would go through and divide the rest of these up. Um, if you wanted to and all I'm doing is right clicking on open space. If you wanted to look and um, check the corresponding faces, if you click on it, it'll show you where this is located on the model itself. Um, that's pretty much it. This is a shareware version, so all you can do is edit, unfold, print, and, and you can't save. The password is only $35 if you want to be able to save. There are several, several um, free files online that you can print or download and open, and they're already in the format that you want and everything, and then print them out. Uh, I'll give you an example real quick. I'm not going to save this. This is a Halo helmet, and uh, I'm not sure who the credit for this one goes to. I got, I got the file itself from a, a costume wiki online somewhere. For Halo costumes, but all I did was um, I op downloaded and opened the file. It's already set up on the pages, uh, 10 pages, and then um, I click print and print it. And I, what I, I didn't print it on regular paper. I printed on uh, this, this 65 pound um, stock card stock paper. 75 sheets only cost me four bucks, something like that. And then uh, once I printed it out. Let me minimize this and show you some pictures I have. All right. So once I print it out, um, as you can see, print it out on 10 pages. I took and I uh, cut them out, cut, cut all the pieces out. And then um, I, I creased the edges with a butter knife. So it would make it uh, the folding easier, and then uh, I just used super glue because it was so much quicker just to put a dab of super glue on these uh, flaps, and then all I had to do was hold it there for like one second, and then I lined up the numbers uh, with the corresponding number, and the lines lined up the lines real good um, on these flaps. So you got about two or three seconds for the super glue bonds, and it's so quick you can just bam glue it together and move on to the next one. And it, this probably takes the longest, just cut them out and stuff. And as you can see, this is a little bit of the progress uh, going through uh, making the helmet and gluing it together out of the cardstock. And this is uh, kind of the finished product of just the paper being glued together. I left the support in there. And here's some more pictures of that. It's kind of got my hand up in there. So I have. I have the paper uh, model. It's pretty stiff. Uh, the next step would be making it hard for for um, actual use. And after doing after doing a little research on the internet, um, I looked into using fiberglass, and I got some fiberglass. It was probably about ten bucks, and I could probably use it on several several pieces. And then uh, what I did was, let me see here, I took in and mixed up the fiberglass resin and I think it's uh, like 10 drops to every ounce and you're only going to use you're only going to want to use uh, three two to three ounces um, per mix because you have to apply this stuff within about five minutes or, or it solidifies and you can't use it no more so I suggest getting a couple extra brushes and and uh, 
just do about two or three ounces at a time. And what I did, I just I ran the resin across the top outside of the helmet and uh, I let that dry for about 30 minutes and then it made it hard enough for me to go through and cut the inside of um, the support out. Now this one's actually after I started doing uh, the actual fiberglass on the inside. So I resined the outside, it was hard enough to cut the support out and then I went back and fiberglassed inside with the actual fiberglass fibers and the resin. Here's some more pictures of the inside. This is just fiberglass uh, fibers with the resin. I just painted the resin and then uh, onto the fibers and then I stuck the fibers in there. You're going to want to use gloves and stuff like that and maybe a, um, a mask to keep the smell down. And then uh, I took and let this stuff dry overnight and it came out solid. I mean pretty hard. And I took some great primer. I primered the whole thing up and let that dry for about an hour or two. Sanded it down. You don't want to sand it before you put the primer on it too. And then uh, after I did the primer, I went and did my base coat, the color that I wanted my base coat to be for this model was green, halo uh, scheme, obviously. And then I did this, uh, what I did on the inside valleys is I just spray painted some black onto it and then I wiped it off real quick so that the, the black paint would stay in the creases. I'm not sure what kind of technique that's called, but I guess I think it's called aging, aging technique. So I wiped it off where it dried real quick, just in the val valleys. And then I did this thing called dry brush, and I took some like a chrome spray paint and sprayed on the tips of a bristle brush. And then I barely lightly uh, went over the edges, like on the uh, peaks edges. And in this case, uh, less is more, if you know what I mean. Kind of did that for the battle, um, battle damage. So it kind of looks like the helmet's really solid metal underneath, and it was scraped down to it. Just kind of went over the edges a little bit with a dry brush technique. Um, after that, I went and added some foam. I got this little visor from a skydiving store for about five bucks. And then uh, I took and put Velcro on the inside of it so there wouldn't be any um, sticky fiberglass poking into his head. And this black stuff right here is just black paper foam that I super glued. And everything's super glued on here. This is tube, uh, black tube that I, I uh, split down the middle and I super glued it onto the edges, onto the edge of the bottom, and onto the inside edge of the face. And then I super glued these little black foam pieces, cut out pieces on here super quick. And it, I mean, this thing is solid, it's not going anywhere. And this is the fiberglass that I used. And that's all the paint that was involved. This was the primer, the gloss black, this was the base green, and that was the chrome paint. And here's a short video of the finished product. It's pretty solid. I mean, you can squeeze it. It isn't going to break or anything. I mean, I tried putting it on my head, but I sized it for my son, and I couldn't even stretch it. I mean, I couldn't widen it up wide enough. You can see the the Velcro I put in there to protect his head from any little stray fiberglass that might be sticking out or anything after I sanded the inside of it out. That visor, I put some Velcro on it. Yeah, right there is where I took and uh, glued, super glued the hose around the edges. You can kind of see that, kind of protect his head. And then this visor comes with Velcro. You can get a cheaper version of it uh, without it and just put your own Velcro on there. It kind of works in line with the Velcro that I put inside the helmet. Some people use uh, like $40 motorcycle helmets that are already painted orange to look like the halo um, face piece or whatever. But that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, this program is just awesome. That's all I got to say. You can go through and make any kind of, any kind of prototypes that you want if you don't have a 3D print machine or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I appreciate all your subscriptions and your positive comments and all your good ratings. And uh, thanks for the motivation and I'll keep trying to put them out there for you guys. All right. Thank you very much.